衝突を確認
But in this episode, Ty is taking the rest of the Boomgers to his grade school to volunteer and cheer up some kids. While at the same time, we kind of get some insight that Taya's teacher crush is no longer with us. Meanwhile, the Hashirians tune up a new Gruma to siphon up that gas. And I would say he's the most effective yet wasted Gruma yet. Able to play notes that zone people out into their wishful memory rewrites. So, when Taya and Sakito get hit by those notes, Sakito dreams that his childhood buddy stops him from going into space, while Taya gets all the tutoring he wants. This of course drains that gas, but it's up to the person themselves to realize that the dream is a dream and get themselves out, which Sakito does with no problem. But the allure of being teacher's pet keeps Taya right under. That is, until the others realize that the song Taya learned from that teacher that's also plastered on the wall might be enough to get him up and at him. FBI, open up! And they're right! Able to get back in the fight and making me realize that getting the gas sucked out of you doesn't really affect you. Really, this episode was meant to be an emotional insight into Taya, with the assumption that his teacher is no longer alive. But it really fell flat for me. Okay, all right, and y'all can keep booing me all you want, but look, I'm a guy that can actually get very emotionally invested if the execution is done right. Like for example, Ultraman Rising. Just watched that for the first time this past Sunday, on Twitch, go check out the VOD, and it's a 10 out of 10 film that definitely got the emotions going. This, not so much. Really, Taya is just a weak character in terms of making me as an audience member care about him. So this really is just an okay episode, giving it that Car Ranger C. 25 is the end of the second lap and the presumed halfway point of the show, with Cannonboard dealing with all of this lack of gas. And seriously, like, like y'all have been out here putting in work for like episodes, I'm talking about months, and 3% is all you can muster? See, Cannonboard's been out here playing the long game, taking a back seat, but for a commander, he sure ain't fighting. See, look, look, Yadukar knows what's up. Mad Rex may have been short-lived, but he at least did stuff. Oh, struck a nerve there. Well, I guess those two have some sort of backstory. And with that, he decides to amp it up a notch by summoning that little th thing that he carries. No, no, it's got a name. Jackie Hoy Hoy. And I guess it's going to do an orbital laser on the Earth. No? See, th that would have been devastating. What, what, what are you doing instead? Sucking out the gas. Well, that's either going to give you really bad pink eye or a bad case of E. coli or even both. Oh, wrong kind of gas. Oh, gas. Oh, that's not going to do anything. If we've learned anything the last few sets of episodes is that just sucking out a person's gas doesn't really do anything to the individual. So look, gas it up. Just gas it up. I Nothing of value is being lost by people getting the gas sucked out of them. So they've got one hour to stop him before the suck game begins. I say, even out here trying to get a satellite to knock it off course. But of course, that's a no-go. Luckily, Shidabe gets some insider info, and Sakito manages to get the save in just in time. So while laying the foundation that someone in the ISA might have actually been in cahoots with the Space Mafia, we get a flashy Boone Red included roll call, that's 119 edition, and manipulated Hashirian Trio, all while Cannonboard flees the warehouse into the, the warehouse. Okay, enticing Sakito to join him and defeating Wild Spindler, or whatever the name the Space Mafia boss's name is, so they can rule together. But that's not worth it to Sakito. 
So, Cannonborg mods himself instead. But it's not enough for how high flying, crazy choreographed Violet Streak is this week. Packing heat from all the other boomgers, including that zoom zoom gun, dealing the finishing blow. But of course, we gotta take him big. So, the Hashirian trio just leave Cannonborg to get jumped. And that's when he pulls out the highly suggestive tentacles. You know, I thought we were gonna do this in, in Gavu. Wait, we're, we're, you guys just said I'm gonna try and get there first? Okay, and with so many. God, this is not the kind of flick I was expecting this week. Cool. But it's also cool because it's about time we got the clusterfuck Gatai up in here. Having all the BBCs dock with Boonja Robo, docking with that diesel, and blasting Cannonborg up, up, and away, and straight into Jackie Hoy Hoy. And with the threat finally gone, everyone celebrates with Shirabe, wondering just how the ISA knew Cannonborg's location. With this episode of Boom Boom Jer, we get the... Mm, mm, mm. Nah, nah, we ain't, we ain't touching that. That's not even a form. That's just a mess. It's, it's a robot on another robot with a little bit of mini robot. Nah, nah, nah that, we ain't touching that one. Rating done. So, this one is a little bit of a mixed bag. It's true that Cannonborg has been laying in the background and working on mods. He was working on something that ended up being nothing. If Jackie Hoi Hoi was the end result of all the experimentation, then that would have been one thing. But since Sakito gave us that background insight into it, we know that it was already a thing. Sakito's big brawl with Cannonboard was great, but it felt a little off. See, with Mad Rex and Taya, even though it was short and I think it was rushed, they at least had an establishment that the two of them were being pegged as rivals. While this fight made it seem like it was a payoff to a rivalry or relationship that wasn't there to begin with. If this was the plan from the get-go, then they really should have had more of a relationship interaction between them. As the only meaningful moment between them before all this was early on in his debut episodes. Since then, Cannonborg has had some episodes in which he just didn't even appear in, and Sakito has just been living off the land. The ISAC plant was the moment of intrigue for me when it came to this episode. So, Look, if we ended up having an established rivalry between Cannonborg and Sagito, which they had looked more than enough time to do that, then the impact of that fight would have been great for a wrap-up, and it would have made this episode definitely an S rank. Sadly, that's not the context within the show, and that's not an established point within the show. As this is a series that just continues to play it by its episodic nature. And even though that fight was great, it lacked that total impact, and thus it drags it down to a still good ABBA RANGER A! So obviously, I laid out my concerns with the last episodes before the rating, so there's no need to really dive back into that, but once again, the big takeaway from this episode was that the ISA knew about Cannonborg's location and that Cannonborg knows the ISA, implying that there's a connection between the two. So, is the ISA a front for the Space Mafia or in cahoots with the Space Mafia? The betrayal on Cannonborg was either due to his failure in collecting gas or that they caught wind of him trying to turn against the head boss, or even both. So, this is overall very interesting of a take. But, more so, we gotta talk about that new poster. First things first, the early rumors were true. Tokyuger is indeed crossing over with Boom Boomger. Yay! Now, of course, those that know me or saw the YouTube short know that Tokyuger was one of those seasons that when it first aired, the very first episode had me going that I'm, I'm too old for this shit. And that was like 10 years ago. Since then, I've not gone back, revisited the show whatsoever, even though people keep telling me that I need to go watch it. But I will say that the prospect of it crossing over with Tokyuger and before it, the other rumor was Gowanger, left me a little bit 
pessimistic when it came to the prospects of Boom Boom Jr. before it actually went to air. But look, look, that, that's beyond the point. Let's see what else we've got here. Another truck with wheels all matching the Boom Jr.s, except Violet's. And as we see in the background, it leads to the guessing game of the Gatai scene in the background. Now, unless this is a brand new mecha from Bunjrio's homeworld, then this is just another Bunjrio add-on. The reason being is that if you up the contrast a little bit on the Robo, you can clearly see that the chest does resemble Bunjrio's, which would be a disappointment if it is just another attachment for Bunjrio and we don't actually get a substantial change in the mecha. But there is another potential here. So of course, it could be a new Robo from Bunjrio's homeworld, or let's say this, what if it's Bundrio himself that gets an upgrade that leads to a complete exterior change and a change in vehicle mode. Now that would actually be something a little bit more exciting because the combinations of the other Boom Boom cars onto this new Bundrio could lead to a plethora of other new forms and armaments. Madrex does appear to be rebuilt and coming back as shown in this poster, but this was also something that kind of was teased during this latest episode. And we also have a new commander known as Death Race. Getting the return of one commander, but adding a second one to the mix is definitely going to be an interesting take depending on how they take things. The centerpiece is of course, Genba. That is the largest point on this poster. Has he betrayed the Boomgers or did he always have an ulterior motive? It's important to remember that during the press conference, they did allude to Genba being somewhat of a thief, very cunning, and then knowing to what his motivations were. And now, we can potentially see that come fruition. If Genba does become some sort of bad guy or an obstacle, it would be crazy to see how they take this and if they're willing to go extra dark. After all, we have had Sentais before in which members have died and gotten replaced which would be something old that can be new again if they do it right. Genba does have a lot of goodwill from the fandom, at least from my perspective. So that betrayal does seem to hit a little bit more than if someone else were to do it. After all, if you think back, he's been working with Taya longer than the others. So there is a lot we don't know about him. The third lap is referred to as identity and determination. So the secrets are going to be let out of the bag and the seed plants from this latest episode will surely get revealed. But with Shida Bay confronting one of the executives this upcoming week, are we just gonna get a payoff instantaneously? I hope not because once again, it's this show's fatal flaw for me. Determination on the other side, are we finally getting that Boom Boom Grand Prix? The BBG? We do see the jacket that Boon Red is rocking. Hopefully, that's not the champion form that we've been seeing hover around the team upgrade rumor mill. But I do hope that this means that we are indeed getting the BBG. However, with the BBG, there's always, in, in terms of my headcanon, the potential rivalry that we could have gotten with Sakito in the BBG given his introduction. But instead, could Gemba's turn actually be more tied to that BBG and him trying to race for his own ambitions on the line? Now there's a bit of a callback to the episode in which Gemba did actually become Boom Orange, in which we do see moments in which he's in his vehicle where he kind of has this like, it seems like a hesitancy look when he's behind the driver's wheel, like he finally made it or that his aspirations are getting closer. And then, towards the end of things, we actually do have him talk about that he's doing it for his own goals going forward. And when pressed on it by Taya, he did say that he's not going to reveal that yet. So, given the fact that we had a callback to that way back when, this could potentially be the payoff to said callback. So, as I've said before, Boom Boom Gear started off as a nostalgic refresh. But for me personally, it started to grow a little bit more mundane. But with the potential that we have with this third lap, I'm optimistic that we finally are going to be getting something that will help this show either match or exceed the ingenuity we've gotten in the last few outings. Here's hoping. 
But yes, those are my thoughts. What are yours? What did you think about lap two of Boom Boomger, known as Hero and Partner? Did they handle the theme well? How do you feel about Cannonborg's departure? And will he return? Is this the end of Boom Boom Killer Robo? And what are your hopes for what this third lap will bring to this show? Anyway, that's it for me. Hopefully I'm not stalled too much to get back into the weekly routines. And for you Gotchard waiters, next week. Next week. Anyway, yes, I'm out of here, and I will see you real boom. <laughs>